In the late 1990s and early 2000s, television viewers tuned in weekly to watch a khaki clad Australian wrestle crocodiles, handle venomous snakes, and point out the beauty of the world's deadliest creatures. In this episode, we explore the legacy of Steve Irwin, one of the greatest conservationists of all time. Aside from a massively successful television career, Irwin ran the Australia Zoo, raised millions of dollars to support conservation, and became a fearless champion for endangered and misunderstood animals worldwide. His shocking and untimely death stunned the world, but his legacy continues. Few wildlife conservationists are recognizable by name. Sir David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, and Jack Hanna are among the few most people are familiar with. Few still are recognizable by a single phrase, crikey, or a signature outfit. Stephen Robert Irwin was born on February 22, 1962 in Upper Fern Tree Gully, Victoria, Australia. He shared his birthday with his mom, Lynn, a wildlife rehabilitator. His father, Bob, was a wildlife expert specializing in the study of amphibians. His parents moved the family to Beerwa, Queensland, and opened the Beerwa Reptile Park in 1970. Steve was involved in the family's business throughout his childhood, developing a love for animals, particularly reptiles. At age six, he caught his first venomous snake, a common brown. At age nine, he started handling crocodiles, catching nuisance crocs hanging around the park's boat ramps. He jumped on the animals, wrestled them back into a dinghy, and moved them away to safety. In 1980, the Irwins Wildlife Park was renamed the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. Steve would often describe the park as the place he loved most, and he spent countless hours feeding animals, maintaining the grounds, and learning about the wildlife. It was during this time that Steve first met Wes Mannion. Mannion had grown up amongst the wildlife in Malaysia, where his father was stationed with the Royal Australian Air Force. The Mannions eventually relocated to Queensland, and when Wes was 14, they visited the Irwins Park. Wes and Steve becoming best friends, bonding over their shared love of reptiles. Mannion began volunteering at the park and was later offered a paid keeping position there. He and Irwin worked side by side running the park when Steve took over its management in 1991. Two days into Irwin's tenure as manager, the 29-year-old Aussie met a 27-year-old American tourist named Terry Raines. Irwin was smitten immediately, as was Raines. She would later say, I thought there was no one like this anywhere in the world. He sounded like an environmental Tarzan, a larger-than-life superhero guy. The infatuation only grew when Irwin learned that Raines ran her own wildlife rehabilitation facility in Oregon called Cooker Country, specializing in protecting predatory mammals. The pair began a fast and intense courtship, marrying less than a year later on June the 4th, 1992 in Eugene, Oregon. The couple's marriage was unique from the start. Instead of a traditional honeymoon spent lounging on a beach or being pampered at a spa, Terry and Steve decided to relocate a problem crocodile in far north Queensland, filming a wildlife documentary along the way with Australian producer John Stanton. The honeymoon footage would become the first episode of The Crocodile Hunter, debuting on Australian television in 1996. Viewers were immediately taken with Steve and Terry's chemistry. Steve's signature look and his enthusiasm about the most dangerous creatures in the world. Their show made its way to North America the following year, and soon people around the world were transfixed by Steve's croc wrestling and exclamations of crikey. The success of the TV show allowed the Irwins to expand their operations, renaming their park Australia Zoo and upgrading the facilities while adding new exhibits. 
Steve's message of conservation through exciting education was the pillar of their facility. Mannion took over management of the zoo in 2001 and worked closely with the Irwins on the Crocodile Hunter, acting as a safety barrier between the crew and the wildlife and stepping in as co-host when Terry was unavailable. The Irwins had their first child, a daughter they named Bindi Sue in 1998, and a son, Robert Clarence, in 2003. Steve was a doting and devoted father, sharing his love of wildlife with his children at every opportunity and instilling in them the need to treat every living being with kindness. He often said if he was to be remembered for anything, he hoped that it was for being a good dad. The Crocodile Hunter ran for five seasons with 13 specials following its conclusion, resulting in a nearly 11-year run. Irwin also starred in Croc Files, The Crocodile Hunter Diaries, and New Breed Vets. Animal Planet, home to Irwin's shows, created an annual Croc Week marathon in the middle of June, a week-long All Things Irwin celebration that started in 2000 and continued through 2007. Steve worked alongside director Mark Strickson to create the 10 deadliest snakes in the world, was a regular on late night TV and starred in a FedEx commercial. He had a cameo appearance in Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle 2 and starred in his own feature film, The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. He, along with his family, had become a recognized staple on screens around the globe. His television personality was really the means by which he could fund and promote his passion products. He was a firm believer in conservation and environmentalism and worked to share his excitement about the natural world instead of preaching or begging. He said of his work, I consider myself a wildlife warrior. My mission is to save the world's endangered species. Irwin founded the Steve Irwin Conservation Foundation, later renamed Wildlife Warriors Worldwide. He purchased large tracts of land in Australia, Vanuatu, Fiji, and the United States to function as wildlife sanctuaries. In 2000, following his mother's untimely death in a car accident, he established the Lynn Irwin Memorial Fund. He also helped found the International Crocodile Rescue and the Iron Bark Station Wildlife Rehabilitation Facility. He used his celebrity to urge people to take part in considerate tourism, avoid supporting illegal poaching, and promote Australian tourism. In 2002, the Australia Zoo was voted Queensland's top tourist attraction. Irwin's life was full of adventure. In 2001, he rescued his best friend, Wes Mannion, from a captive saltwater crocodile attack. Mannion escaped with only a scar from a nasty croc bite on his thigh. In 2003, Irwin assisted with a search and rescue in Mexico. While filming a documentary on sea lions off the coast of the Baja Peninsula, he suspended his work and devoted all his resources to finding two missing scuba divers. Irwin himself retrieved stranded diver Scott Jones from a narrow rock ledge, delivering him to safety on his boat. He traveled to sub-Saharan Africa to catch and share the beauty of the black mamba snake. He bonded with an orangutan and her offspring, sharing a cuddle with them as they perched on a tree branch. He cried over the death of one of his crocodiles, going as far as to give her a proper eulogy at her funeral. He trained in the martial art of Gaido Jutsu, was a passionate rugby fan, and loved surfing and jet skiing. He was a certified scuba diver, and of course, he traveled to dozens of countries seeking out the most misunderstood creatures. In July of 2006, Steve and Terry set out a 10-year business plan for the Australian Zoo. At just 44 years old, Steve would have felt he had so much time ahead of him to continue his work and expand his conservation efforts. In late August, he departed for Queensland's Bat Reef to film a documentary called Ocean's Deadliest. Irwin was incredibly excited about this opportunity. He knew it would bring him face to face with some of the ocean's most dangerous creatures. 
He worked alongside cameraman Justin Lyons, a longtime friend of 15 years. Lyons would later say, it's all the things that would normally make people cringe. This is what Steve loved. So he was very excited about it. Eight days into filming on September the 4th, Irwin and his crew set out to find tiger sharks. They hit a patch of bad weather that impeded their progress and Irwin grew restless waiting for it to pass. Steve was like a caged tiger when he couldn't do something, particularly on a boat, Lyons said. So he said, let's go and do something. So we jumped into the inflatable and off we went to look for something to do. The pair soon spotted a gigantic eight foot wide stingray and decided to grab some footage. Irwin hopped in the chest deep water and the camera rolled. The stingray was calm and Lyons said they weren't concerned because stingrays typically just swim away if they don't want you around them. They were just wrapping up a final shot. The stingray was between Irwin and the boat and Irwin planned to swim towards the ray as Lyon filmed it swimming away. But instead of fleeing as the men anticipated, the stingray propped on its front and began stabbing wildly with its tail. Lyons would later reflect that the animal probably thought Steve's shadow was a tiger shark who feed on the rays regularly. The camera continued to roll following Irwin's rule that filming continues even if he was hurt or injured. As Lyons moved the camera off the ray and back to Irwin, he realized his friend was standing in a massive pool of blood. The tail strikes had plunged into him. Lyons helped Irwin back into the inflatable where the two assessed the injury. Initially, Irwin assumed the barb had punctured his lung. There was a two inch injury right above his heart, gushing blood. Lyons said, he had an extraordinary threshold for pain. So I knew that when he was in pain, that it must have been painful. Even if we'd been able to get him into an emergency ward at that moment, we probably wouldn't have been able to save him because the damage to his heart was massive. The stingray barb had penetrated Irwin's thoracic wall, causing massive irreversible trauma. On their way back to the main boat, Lyons urged Irwin to think about his children. I'm dying, Irwin said calmly. It was the last thing he said. When they returned to Croc One, the crew performed CPR on Irwin for over an hour as they rushed towards medical help. But when they finally reached the medics, he was pronounced dead. Steve Irwin, the legendary crocodile hunter and champion of wildlife around the world, had been killed in a freak accident by an animal usually referred to as the pussycat of the ocean. Steve Irwin's death was met with shock and grief by fans around the world. He was buried in a private ceremony at his beloved Australia Zoo on September the 9th. Later that month, a public memorial service was held in the zoo's 5,500 seat Crocosium and broadcast live to over 300 million viewers. Terry was too upset to speak, but Bindi talked about her love for her father. Terry Irwin was invited to present a special recognition award to Sir David Attenborough at the British National Television Awards in October of 2006. The audience burst into applause when she walked on stage, giving the grieving widow a standing ovation. She published a memoir called My Steve in 2007 and in the same year destroyed the only footage of Steve's death. She became an Australian citizen on November the 15th, 2009, a date shared with the annual Steve Irwin Day. Terry runs Australia Zoo and continues Steve's conservation work alongside her children. Bindi Irwin has hosted her own wildlife show, Bindi the Jungle Girl, hosted a wildlife themed game show called Bindi's Boot Camp and starred in several feature films and reality television programs. In March of 2020, Bindi married her longtime boyfriend, Chandler Powell at Australia Zoo. The couple had met there as teenagers. On their first wedding anniversary, she and Chandler welcomed their daughter, Grace Warrior Irwin Powell. Robert Irwin also has a long list of television appearances along with a series of books. He's a renowned wildlife photographer 
and has raised tens of thousands of dollars for the Wildlife Warriors nonprofit. Along with Wes Mannion, the family all appeared together in the television series Crikey, It's the Irwins. The show follows their work at the Australia Zoo and continues to share Steve's message. In 2020, the Irwins helped save over 90,000 animals during the Australian wildfires. With all these efforts and more, I think it's safe to say Steve would be proud. So, did you grow up watching The Crocodile Hunter or Steve's other shows? Let us know in the comments below. Right then, take care and I'll see you next time with another story to make you say, well, I never.